Howdy. Let's take a look at uh, another one of these like track and shoot type problems. So for number two, it says that a truck of mass M traveling at a velocity of a magnitude V naught as shown comes to a curve in a flat road. It is not a circular curve, but instead the radius is given by R equals R naught times one plus sine theta, where R naught is known and theta is defined in the figure. By using the brakes, or his accelerator, he travels along the curve keeping the time rate of change of theta at a constant value of v naught over r naught. So the time rate of change of theta, that's your d theta dt, that's your omega. So your omega is a constant v naught over r naught. And in part a, it says find the truck's velocity as a function of theta and evaluate the velocity when the truck reaches the end of the curve. Okay, so first off, let's find VR and V theta. VR is dr dt. Your radius is changing with respect to time, but I have R as a function of theta. In this case, we're going to have to use a little chain rule. And so if your R is changing, but it's changing with respect to theta, which you're going to do 100% of the time, is this is going to be dr d theta times d theta dt. Okay? Now my r is equal to, I'll distribute that r naught, is r naught plus r naught sine theta. So my vr, which is dr d theta, taking the derivative of r with respect to theta, is going to be an r naught cosine theta. And we already saw that d theta dt, that's v naught over r naught. So it's v naught over r naught, which is just going to be v naught cosine theta. So this is my v r. Now that I have v r, I need v theta. v theta, which is equal to r omega, is equal to where your r is r naught plus r naught sine theta, and our omega is v naught over r naught, which, notice how all these r naughts can cancel, so this will be v naught times 1 plus sine theta, and this would be your v, oops, and this would equal your v theta. So now that I have v r, now that I have v theta, I want to find the truck's velocity as a function of theta. No, it's actually Here's VR, here is V theta, and your V total, the magnitude of your total velocity would be the square root of your VR squared plus your V theta squared. So this would be my velocity as a function of theta. And then it says evaluate the velocity when the truck reaches the end of the curve. So notice how it's traveled an angle of 90 degrees. Notice how it's traveled at theta of pi over 2. And so at theta equals pi over 2, uh, the vr is equal to v naught cosine of pi over 2. And we should know that cosine of pi over 2 is 0. v theta is going to be v naught times 1 plus sine of pi over 2, which is equal to v naught times 1 plus. Hopefully by now we know that sine of pi over 2 is 1. And so this is 2 v naught. And so therefore, the magnitude of v total at theta equals pi over 2 is going to equal the square root of 0 squared plus the 2 v naught squared, which is simply just 2 v naught. Now let's take a look at part B. For part B, it says find the total force that the road must exert on the truck as a function of theta. Well, we know that F total the magnitude of f total is equal to the square root of fr squared 
plus f theta squared. So what I need to do is I gotta find fr and I gotta find f theta. fr is gonna be m times ar, which is gonna be m times, uh, let's see, your ar is your d2r dt squared minus r omega squared. And we know that f theta is m times a theta, which is m times. If you take a look at the last couple of videos, I've written this at the top of the problem. I would highly recommend doing that. I would highly recommend, before you even begin, just jot these down. That way you're always just constantly something to have. You don't have to pull it out of thin air. Anyways, you have your 2 dr dt omega plus r alpha. So I need to make sure that I actually have all of these. And start off with this one, the d2r dt squared. Once again, we already know that our r is changing with respect to theta, so once again, we need to use chain rule. But this would be, this would be d2r d theta squared. That's the second derivative of r with respect to theta. But to make it into this, I need to multiply this by d theta squared over dt squared. That's your omega squared. It's your d theta dt squared. Now, the d2r, d theta squared, second derivative of r with respect to theta. We already know that dr d theta is r naught cosine theta. So the second derivative of this would be a negative r naught sine theta times your d theta dt squared. If d theta dt is v naught over r naught, this would be v naught over r naught squared, which I can just make this into a negative. Uh, this will be a sine theta v naught squared over r naught. So this is your d2r dt squared. So I'm actually just going to box everything that I need. So there's that. Uh, we already know that r, r is equal to your, well, let's go ahead and write it out. r, okay, so here's going to be fr. <laughs> I'm going to box everything. Here's going to be your fr. Here's going to be your f theta. I've got this identified. r, we know is r naught plus r naught sine theta. Omega, you know, is v naught over r naught. Uh, r dt, we should already have. dr dt, we identified earlier as uh, this right here, v naught cosine theta. <laughs> I've already got omega, uh, alpha zero. Your alpha is gonna be zero. Because you're at a constant omega, your time rate of change of theta is a constant value of v naught over r naught. Okay, and so what I've done is I've identified everything. And if I had more space, what I would do, I'd probably then just actually write it out. But in order to get full credit, all you need to do is identify what your solution is and make sure that every you know variable is given or at the very or or solve for. It's either given or solve for.